Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday around 9.30 for me when I'm filming this. It's kind of a cloudy day, a little bit chilly. Looks like it's going to rain, but you just never know if it's going to clear up or not. I hope it clears up. I could use another sunny day. Mm. Here's little Mick. He's, he's mostly done. He's not completely done, but he's to the point where I would paint his hair. Usually when I start painting hair, it means I'm done playing around with the skin tone. I might still do details and stuff because I have to bake the hair varnish and do all that. So I might still play with that. And I haven't done like nail beds and nail tips and um, arm and leg details yet. But I just get to it towards the end right before I varnish. But his head is ready to be painted. And I've been painting other babies. I will show you. Who I have right here. Um, I have Joanna awake in the oven. She's coming uh, along really, really well. Here is maybe I'll pause and go grab her. But here is Priscilla so far. She has kind of a base coat of sketchy on here, and then um, two more layers of brown. And it just graduated from light brown to to medium brown to kind of dark brown and then I'm going to use like a blackish brown to kind of just go around and kind of pull things up a little bit and then I might use a thicker brush to kind of fill in some of this here. I don't like to see the, the paint strokes too literally and these are kind of a little bit drawn, they look a little drawn on and here is Lavender Awake. Same deal, I did the light color, I did a medium color. I already did the darker color on this baby, so now I'm just going to use the thick brush to go around and kind of clean this up a little bit. Here's Jenny. Remember I said I was going to do her very pale? So she has her light brown hair on. I don't think it's going to get much darker than that. I might do a little bit of highlighting, but I think her hair is going to stay pretty much like this, and then I'm going to root her on top with some light brown, maybe with a little bit of blonde highlight hair. Excuse me. My throat is so dry. And then let me grab this baby. This is Alma. And I'm going to start her and Mick right now. So I will show you. Okay, I am back with Joanna. She just came out of the oven. She's nice and warm. Ah, oh, feels good. It's a little chilly in here today. I have the heater going, but my feet get cold when I go outside. There she is. She doesn't have her eyes in yet, so I know that looks scary. Maybe I should cover them. So she has, I was originally going to just root her whole head with kind of curly, fine, curly, dark hair, but I started painting her and I couldn't stop. So I think I'm just gonna give her wavy dark hair just on the top, but she is almost done. I'm going to go ahead and um, probably do a little bit of black to kind of give it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more black hair to give it some dimension. But there she is. I think she turned out great. I am still not certain about the eyes. In my mind, she looks like she should have some big chocolatey brown eyes. I think they would look warm and she just looked so sweet. But I will see what I have. I don't want to have to do like a special order for eyes and, and have people ship me eyes and stuff right now. So I'm gonna just look and see what I have. But hopefully I have some brown eyes for her. Or some gray. Maybe some gray eyes would be pretty, like newborn gray. I'm not sure. But I really like the way her skin tone turned out. It's really pretty. I love this baby's face. I don't know what it is. So cute. I'm going to make a list of like my 20 most favorite sculpts. It'll be hard to keep it to 20, but those would be mine. And if you're a dolly maker or a dolly collector... There's room in the comments. Tell me, I don't know. I don't want to pressure anybody, but if you have your t your top 20, I want to know what they are. Or do your top 10 or your top five. I'm curious to see if uh, to see what everybody loves. So we're gonna do Alma. This baby I've never painted before, and uh, she's a new one of the newer Bountiful Baby Realborns. And I love their I love their Realborns. And I know there's. So kind of all that weirdness happening in baby land with lawsuits and stuff and I am that is not my circus those are not my monkeys I have opinions about it which I'm not going to share today 
but I, I love their sculpts and and stuff if ooh, that's too dark first I'm still happily painting their sculpts I like them the rest of that stuff will work itself out and if I have to make decisions down the road I will but today is not that day This is a little darker than I would normally go. And I'm not doing a hair painting tutorial because, you know, honestly, I, I don't, and I've said this before when I've painted hair on YouTube, I don't feel like I'm totally qualified to do that at this point. And I'm gonna take that off. There's, there's gunk on this brush it wasn't the cleanest brush. And you're probably saying, what the heck is she doing? Um, I'm going to do this real quick. And it might look like crazy business. And it sort of is. But I'm actually going to stain her head a little bit with this brown. Let it dry and then I'll paint. And I know you're thinking, why are you doing that? Well, it gives me a little bit of a dark backdrop. It's just a tiny bit. And um, so when I'm painting, it doesn't look like there's white scalp and then there's hair and that's all there is. Especially since I usually do a thicker head of hair. I think if I were doing sparse hair, it would be different, but I know that I tend to go a little bit thick on hair and this kind of helps me out a little bit. It's kind of an optical illusion. Don't do it all the time, but it's, I'm just feeling it right now. I'm feeling like that's the way I want to go. This is why I don't do a hair painting tutorial on YouTube because I think that's something that needs to be thought out really well and planned and, and it's going to take a lot more time than than YouTube. And honestly, I've, I've been asked and I'm considering it doing a, a, you know, a hair painting tutorial that people can, can purchase. And I know people are saying, oh, you know, why, do, why should I have to pay for it? I can get that for free on YouTube. Yeah, you can. And I think a lot of artists are generously providing content on YouTube because I think Dolly artists are, are a gracious and generous bunch of people by nature. And we like to share. And it's a good thing because somebody shared with us, we pay it forward, which is why you see a lot of how to paint a reborn baby on YouTube. And it's a nice thing, but if I think if I'm going to take the time to make a well-planned and a well-made video with detailed instructions and kind of give away something that I do, that it isn't too much to ask that people chip in a little bit for the time and the energy. I don't mind. Um, I pay for for workshops and classes and stuff. I, I think I told you guys last week I took sorry, I took a silicone workshop from Susan Dizon Gibbs. She's pretty awesome. It was so it was worth it. It was worth every penny that I paid for it. And she was able to do it online. I like taking classes in person. I don't take a lot, but I've given a lot of classes in person just because you can see what other people are doing and you can help them along. And you're right there hands-on. Like, you know, if somebody's holding a brush a funny way, you can say, hey, why don't you try this so you can get the scoop. And you can, it's, you know, it's school. It's a good thing. And you can't do that online. People can't really ask you questions, but being that a lot of us can't be everywhere all the time, online's the second best thing. I actually took like a little, um, kind of a little workshop with Sierra Watson last year, I think it was. She's just giving like a little private workshop for ethnic skin tones. And I took that with her and I really, really had a, a good time watching her videos. They weren't super, you know, fancy. They weren't high-tech, well-produced. It was just her sharing some of her secrets 
and that was worth a lot to me. I'd have paid a lot more to watch her, her paint babies. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm giving this ear a little pink. It just looked a little pale to me and patchy. Sometimes your brush doesn't get all the way into all those little crevices and creases and you don't see it till you, till you look at it from an angle that you wouldn't normally look at it. Let's do mixed head stuff. And again, my fingers are gonna be look kind of brown and yucky and that is mostly because I'm working with brown paint and no gloves. It's a little bit of paint that kind of built up in here. I don't want to scrape that off so much that I create go down to bare vinyl. And again, these are things no one else is going to notice but me. But I always think if they bother me, they're probably going to bother somebody else. I want people to have my best possible baby. I just blushed it a little bit more. That's okay. So I'm going to start off with a kind of a thicker brush. It is a 10 millimeter 3 8 brush, Royal and Lang Nickel. I don't know where the heck I got this brush. I found it in my stuff. And every time I find a brush in my pile of brushes that I like, I keep it over here. But I am doing this color here. It's kind of a, a light brown grayish color and it is not very dark. This is my sketching color. And I just use that to kind of map the head a little bit. And it's a good color if you're doing blonde as your under color. Oh, and that head that I just did, I'm gonna pop that in the oven before I paint over it. And I'm just gonna start with a swirl. And I never say, oh, this is the direction I'm gonna go. And it's just, however I'm feeling in the moment. And I sometimes pre-plan hair, but not always does it turn out the way I planned. Usually it just goes the way it goes. And I will be very honest and say a lot of times it's just a matter of me not being able to stop. I just kind of get into this little hair groove, you know? I get into a hair zone and I'm like, oh, I don't want to stop. Let's put a little more of this. Let's put a little more of that. And I also try and you'll see that there's like a, a predictability in the pattern of the hair that I make. And it's not because I can't do anything else. It's just that I like to top root babies. And if I do this pattern that I'm doing here, the hair blends better. I don't want it to look like mohawk and, you know, high and tight military hair on the side. I want it to look give the illusion that there's just a full head of hair, but it's just a little bit thicker on top. You know how babies have this kind of thicker bit up here? And I really only top root because I want it to look softer. Some people don't want the full head of hair, but they don't want to be only a painted baby because they want some more of that realism. So for me, doing the top rooting is kind of a happy medium, and I'm not the best rooter in the whole world, so I don't get stressed out about rooting because I'm not doing a lot. And there's hair underneath it, so it's already mapped out for me. So all I'm doing, and um, again, I'm not gonna go into detail about painting, because once I go down that road, we're gonna have, this is gonna take too long, I'll never get these babies done. What I'm doing is I'm just making like a sun with the rays coming out and the wind is just blowing them in the in one direction and I'm just following it all the way all the way down I have to take this hair and come all the way down here and get it to the baby hairs in the back